many scientists are sure that this is the future of space travel. One of them is Les Johnson. The sun puts out photons, light. Standing here on a sailboat, the photons that are falling on us are pushing on us. But the push is so slight that we don't feel it. All the other forces around us are, are so much uh, higher in magnitude that uh, it's not noticeable. But in the vacuum of space, if you have a large enough, light enough material, the, the pressure that's exerted from these solar photons can cause that to move. To see if sunlight could provide enough force to drive a sail through space, Johnson and his team built this, a man-made sun. In front of me, we have a simulated sun, about three times brighter than what the sun is at the Earth. And that's the reason I'm wearing these UV protecting sunglasses, and that it could damage your eyes if I were to accidentally look right into the beam. They're testing the ultra-thin, ultra-lightweight material they would need to make a real solar sail. It's mounted on a rod in the full glare of their artificial sun. As you look in there, you can see it slowly rocking back and forth. What's causing that is the sunlight pressure, the photon pressure, as it's pushing on the sail. Incredibly, it works. This piece of sail material is being moved by nothing more than light. Based on work that's being performed around the country, uh, solar sail technology is getting to the point where very soon we'll be flying it in space. To reach the immense speeds needed to travel from star to star, the solar sail must start its voyage with as big a push as possible. It must fly as close as it can to the source of its power, the sun. It's a dangerous maneuver, but if it works, the craft will whip around the sun and hurtle out into space at almost three quarters of a million kilometers an hour. A solar sail could reach the nearest stars in just decades. It's a truly impressive start, but is it enough? Our galaxy is a very big place. To get from one side to the other, even using a super fast solar sail traveling at incredible speeds, would still take two and a half million years. And our galaxy is only one of billions that make up our universe. This is the final frontier. If we ever want to be true star travelers, we're going to have to take a completely different approach. We're going to have to learn how to manipulate the very fabric of space itself. Some scientists believe there may be a quicker way to get around the universe. One of them is cosmologist Peter Coles. When early man first began to explore his environment, he would run into fundamental barriers whenever he came across mountains. The mountains are not easy to cross. When you're faced with a wall like these mountains around us, you've got no choice either but to go around them or over the top.
Now, these days, it's exactly the same thing with space travel. If we're going to explore and colonize our galaxy, then the distances we have to travel are truly immense. So when it comes to space travel, we're really st still very much in the Stone Age. The answer could be to take a shortcut. Don't go round the obstacle, go through it. If you travel through space, you're fundamentally limited by the speed of light. But it's just possible that the laws of physics might have a kind of loophole in them which allows us to travel slower than the speed of light but still travel huge distances in a very short time. And the way you can accomplish that is through a wormhole. The wormhole is basically a tunnel that takes a shortcut through space-time. Say here to the nearest star could be connected by a very short tunnel. Wormholes may sound like science fiction, but creating one may just be possible. First, we'd have to harness the incredible forces of an exploding star and use them to punch a hole through space. We'd need exotic forms of energy to keep the tunnel open. But the science is sound. At least in theory, it is possible to create a tunnel that reaches clear across the universe. Experiments have already begun to try and build the first tiny wormholes. In theory, wormholes would take you from one side of the universe to the other in literally no time at all. Instant travel. Anywhere. A wormhole could just as easily have taken me halfway across our galaxy. But with the universe at your feet, how do you decide where to go? For that, you're going to need a map. Space, as we've discovered, is very big. But Professor Brian Boyle and a team of Australian astronomers may have the beginnings of an answer. They're creating the biggest map imaginable, a map of our universe. Traditionally, astronomers have looked at the universe as a flat map on the plane of the night sky. You can think of it like a map of the Earth. For a hiker, a flat map, it's no use at all. A flat map wouldn't tell you if there was a mountain in the way or a huge ravine. In the same way, the hikers of the future will need a three-dimensional map to guide them around. To create a three-dimensional map, Boyle and his team had to develop a unique piece of equipment. Ten years in the making and weighing over three tons, the device uses over 600 fiber optic cameras. The whole apparatus is delicately maneuvered into position high up on one of the biggest telescopes in the world. Everything's connected up, we're ready to go. Fiber's in position, what we're going to do now is to take the telescope back up to the top and wait for the stars to come out. Every night, the telescope looks at a new patch of the night sky. And for each point of light it sees, a 
robot places a single fiber optic camera. The light from the object is measured and its distance from the Earth accurately calculated. So far, the tireless robot has looked at and logged the positions of tens of thousands of stars and galaxies. Bit by bit, it has pieced together an unequaled picture of the universe. And this is the result. For the first time ever, we can see what our universe looks like in three dimensions. When the map was first created, I, you know, I was really filled with a sense of a uh, mixture of awe and excitement. You know, here I could see, almost developing in front of my own eyes, was the structure of the universe. Giant archipelagos of galaxies stretching hundreds of millions of light years across intergalactic space. The day before I'm going to launch from right here, I go to the beach right over there. I go to the ocean. I lie in the ocean and uh, I look at the satellites crossing overhead, but I look at those satellites just whizzing along and I think, uh, uh, tomorrow that's me. <laughs> So I think on that kind of thing where you don't know if you're coming back and you don't know the final outcome and you may not really know where you're going to end up, you focus on a journey and that's what carries you forward. There's a lot out there to explore, and one day humanity may be lucky enough to do it. Our children, or our children's children, will reach for the stars. So the next time you look at the night sky, remember that space is stranger and more beautiful than we can begin to imagine. And above all, remember this. Out there in space is our future.